Bruh. It doesn't matter who you vote for. I'm just saying. You know, we like, you know, we vote for vote for Hillary, which I probably will end up doing, or not. Or if I vote for Trump or not, I will still listen to them. And I'm not going to listen to NBC or Fox or CBS. Well, nobody's making up my mind for me. No, no, I'm just saying I'm not going to listen to those stations because they only give you partial stories. I was... Listen. Everybody only gives only partial stories. Fox Fox leans it towards the Republicans, and the broadcast channels. Hey, speaking of Fox, uh, Roger Ailes, boy, he, he's in a lot of hot water. He's gone. I know. Well, because uh, Gretchen Carlson uh, said a few things about him, which I'm sure were very true, because once she said it, a lot of people came out. Uh, Megan Kelly alluded to the fact that uh, he's a strange guy and some other women. So if you're wondering how Fox gets all those foxy ladies to be journalists and commentators, you know, I mean, uh, and what an ugly guy he is. Boy, jeez. Yeah. I'd rather do it with a corpse if you want to know the truth. Well, you know. I don't know if you, if you ever watch a show called Family Feud. Oh yeah, I've seen. Well, I've seen the original Family Feud with uh, Richard Dawson many yeah. many years ago. Well, now with Steve Harvey, it's, it's, a, it's Steve Harvey's hilarious in the show. But the other day, one of the questions was, "What wouldn't you do if somebody offered you a million dollars?" Oh, don't you remember the movie Indecent Proposal mm-hmm. with uh, Demi Moore and Woody Harrelson? Yeah. He was an architect. And Robert Redford played a billionaire who offered him a million dollars to spend the night with his wife. Well, so they asked people, you know, that was one of the questions of the contestants. One person said, if somebody offered, if, if somebody wanted her to eat an ant or a bug, and they offered a million dollars, she wouldn't eat the bug. I would eat the bug shit for a million dollars. <laughs> and another one said they wouldn't lie for a million dollars. They wouldn't what? Lie. That was a lie right there. And another one, well, one, you know, the, the number one answer, I wouldn't kill anybody, which is a good answer. I would think so. Yeah, but after that, you know, I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't steal. Offer me a million dollars, and I'll go to a restaurant, and I'll steal a fork, and that's stealing. Now, hey, listen, you talk dollars. about, you talk about stealing a fork. Back in 1971... When we all grad, my friends and I all graduated college, and one of my friends came. He he went to Canada to escape the draft, and uh, he came down for our friend's wedding. This was the first wedding of all all of the group that that we used to hang around with, mm-hmm. and he still happens to be married. By the way, I give him a lot of credit, George and Laura. Uh. Anyway, Danny came down from Canada, and if he jumped up and down, he would have dropped the silverware on the floor. He said, I have to furnish my apartment. <laughs> and he took forks, and he took knives, and everything. In, in every corner of his tuxedo, wherever he found a, a room to put something, you know. But it was, it was really hilarious, you know. So his silverware all has the name of the place probably on it. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure it. Uh, I'm sure it does. You know, or the company who sold it and supplied it. You know. Yeah. But uh, what can I tell you? Anyway, once again, the number is six four six five nine five three two seven five. You know, doctor. Uh, let doc, us. You know, I mean, I was just going to say something, but Doctor Mark wrote up uh, the show. What we're going to talk about yesterday. But it's not even worth writing up a show because you write up a show and then... I know. Look what happened today in Germany. Yeah. Nine people were killed. The guy was right outside uh, uh, 
Burger King. McDonald's. McDonald's. Well, to me, they're all the same. Uh, Burger King. McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> Can't get it straight. And uh, he started shooting. Now, that scene reminded me, if you remember, the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas. Not a seat. Michael Douglas had just lost his job. Okay, and he was in the middle of a nasty divorce with his wife. And he walked into McDonald's and he wanted to order breakfast. And it was 10.32. They stopped serving breakfast at 10.30. He had a machine gun with him. Why? I don't know. And he holds a machine gun up and he rapid fires it and everybody's running out. And I want my breakfast. He said he wanted his egg and sausage on a on a on a muffin, you know, or whatever. But that's what that reminded me of. Uh, but this guy was actually killing people. And this guy was aiming for the kids. I know. They said he wanted to kill kids. You know. Um, well, that's goddamn that's sick. more of a terrorist tactic to scare the people even more. Well, you know the unfortunately. This is the world in the 21st century. You don't need ISIS to land on your shores, okay? All you need is one person with enough ammo and 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 uh, or an assault truck, assault rifle, or a truck full of uh, explosives, or, or just, just a, a big truck. ten-ton truck to go into a crowd and just mow people down. Because that's what ISIS says. You don't have to come here and fight with us. Do it in your own neighborhood. And you don't need a gun to do it. No, you don't. You really don't. Yeah, so, uh, I think that that sort of killed the gun argument a little bit for Obama. Because he blamed everything on guns all the time. Well, you know, and the NRA says... Who stops a bad guy with a gun? A good guy. But you know what the police said after Dallas? After Dallas, with the killing of the the five policemen and the wounding of three or four others, uh, the police themselves said, Brown, uh, Chief Brown said, look, the bottom line is, because Dallas is a open, Texas is an open carry state. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, if we see you with a gun, we don't know if you're a good guy or a bad guy. So it's like you risk getting yourself shot, even if you're a good guy. That's why the police always tell you, in the case of a home invasion, you know, don't reach for your gun first, because chances are the guy just wants whatever you have, and he'll leave, pull out a weapon, and he'll kill you. I don't know. I don't know either. But once again, folks, it's uh, 646-595-3275. I'm sure that some of you watched even part of the convention. Now, remember, you don't necessarily have to agree with us. I mean, uh, the Rev and I don't agree on a lot of most things, actually, or many things. I am. See, we don't even agree with ourselves half the time. Yeah, I was far. I am far to the left, and he is more uh, center to. I wouldn't say center right. Probably, you know, probably just you know dead center. Okay. I'll, well, let's I'll, say. Tell you, I'll tell you how I describe myself. I'm socially liberal and economically conservative. Somewhat. Which are most of the independents are, I guess, to some point. Well, it'd be interesting, you know, now with Tim Kaine, it'd be interesting to see how the independents vote. They just said on uh, CNN, Anderson Cooper, I believe it was Anderson Cooper who said, no, it was Dana Bash, who said, by picking Tim Kaine, she's hoping to get the independent voters who were not that pleased with Bernie because he was so far to the left, which made Hillary go far to the left. Tim Kaine is more center left, okay, more moderate, mm-hmm. 
And they're also hoping that uh, they get some of the Republicans who are not happy with what they've heard from Donald Trump. Yep. You know, because, I mean, the guy talks through two sides of his mouth. You know, he says one thing one day and next week he says something else. Uh, One of the things they said on the news today, they said this is the day after his big moment, his big night. And what does he do? He's bashing Ted Cruz instead of starting to campaign for the presidency okay. and saying something about Hillary. Okay, so so what does that got to do with the way, the way he comes in? He, he said he lies. What does that got to do with being a lie? It has nothing to do with it. He talks to two sides of his mouth, which means a lie. It has nothing to do with it. I'm just throwing things out. No, no, but you say he talks out of two sides of his mouth. Well, he's trying to talk back. First, he says there's going to be a ban on all Muslims... You know, in a Trump administration, and now one of the things in his speech was, no, not going to be a ban on all Muslims. There's going to be a ban on people coming from uh, countries that don't have, have, you know, have have ISIS in them, basically. Yeah, you know, yet when you listen to I watched uh, Politically Incorrect last night, and they had Gavin Newsom, who's the lieutenant governor of California, and he said that the refugees coming into California have been vetted over two years. So it's not like the open borders come on in. You know, they, they interview them, they check their background. The government says they have no way of checking the background. Well, they do the best they can. But exactly. Look, the bottom line but, but is they can't do it. Well, the well, but Trump is talking about vetting everybody. So for him, it's the same thing. No, is he, his vetting process going to be any different? Yeah, he says he will not do anything until he finds the, the proper vetting, proper way of vetting the people. Oh, and his way is the best way because well, right he's now, Donald the Trump. Government, the government, the FBI, everybody admits they can't properly vet the people. They do the best job that they can. And they're saying, they admit it themselves, it's not good. Well, it doesn't make a difference because all it takes is one person to get through to be a terrorist. And that's all that people are going to remember. You know, people fall through the cracks. Yeah, but, you know, you'd rather have less people fall. I mean, the government, the FBI says our, our vetting process is no good. Everything Trump does is huge. Okay, you, you got to remember. In uh, in uh, Syria, ISIS stole the uh, passport machine. The prince passports. I thought you had one in the bedroom. Well, that's my own private one. Yeah, but you're selling it, aren't you? No. Well, why would you print one up for you? When you can get one legally. Oh, you know, my special work that I do. Oh, uh, you're a secret agent man? If I had, if I tell you, you'd have to die. <laughs> no, that's if, that's when you're the rebellious rev and you're exactly. an esoteric uh, minister. That's what I'm doing the work for. That's... I'm doing the work of God. <laughs> okay. Oh, fair enough. Okay, okay. But, uh... Anyway, yeah. We, so you know, listen. Definitely, there's a, there's a problem with vetting them. Everybody admits it. Now, is there a better way? Trump thinks there might be. I, there may not be a way to vet them at all. You know, are you going to tell them? You know, to swear over the uh, Quran. The Quran. That, that you, you know you're not a jihadist. You know, that you will support the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You remember the uh, oath. You were sworn, just like I was. I don't remember the oath, though. Obey the laws of the state of New York and uh, the uh, laws of the United States, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mark and I both, during the Vietnam War, we did our 